topic of my presentation today is hard and soft tissue modification to achieve predictable and uh, stable results. And all we do in our everyday practice is lead us to enhancing the aesthetic and biological outcome of implant placement. How to achieve the perfect result? This is the question we ask ourselves each time we meet the new patient coming to our, to our offices. So there is three P, patience, persistence, and passion. All these three issues will affect our everyday work. Look at these small changes. Emergence profile just after taking out our healing abutment. Some small modification a week after uh, placing our temporary restoration. And look, final result. Beautiful outcome. Look here. This is initial situation. This is what we've done with soft and hard tissue. Is it, is it a miracle? No. This is what we are doing every day in our offices. At least we have to try to do it to achieve such type of results. So, how to get there? What we have to do for this result? This is the basics. I'm not opening America. Bone and soft tissue augmentation may and should enhance and optimize the quality and quantity of structural, structural bone. I want you to, to pay attention. These words, structural bone, means that this bone can bear the, uh, the tension uh, from the implants which, which we are placing in this uh, bone. And, of course, we have to pay a big and great attention to amount and volume of soft tissue and keratinized tissue around our implants. This is well-known tissue is an issue, but bone sets the tone. And my lecture will go around all this stuff, creating new bone, enhancing soft tissue, creating new emergence profile, surrounding our implants with enough amount of keratinized tissue to be sure that the result will be long-lasting. So first of all, we have to build substantial bone support for our implants. Then we have to create sufficient soft tissue volume and necessary width of keratinized tissue. Here is some example of that. Then we have to modify soft tissue to get ideal emergence profile. This is not easy. That is why I said that we have to follow 3P rule. And the most important is the passion. If you have passion, you will get the final result. Of course, we have to be able to support our emergence profile with properly designed restoration. And each time the same steps, performing bone augmentation, increasing the volume of soft tissue with connective tissue grafts, increasing the width of keratinized tissue with free gingival graft, and modifying the shape of emergence profile with temporaries using so-called dynamic compression technique. And finally, we have to support our created emergence profile with properly designed restoration. Easy. So how to create sufficient amount of bone? There is a different techniques. And we have to know about all of them. And you have to adopt the best one, which is working well in your hands. Let's look what we have. And of course, we have to take into account what type of biomaterials you are going to use. Listen, during this uh, one and a half days, we came with very strict information. Either it had, has to be uh, allograft, which consists of cortical and cancellous particles, 70, th uh, 30, 70, I mean 30 is cortical, 70 is cancellous. Either we just listen how Dr. Darosa shows the ideal media, ideal bone, it's tuberosity, full of all three features, osteogenic, osteoconductive, leave of, uh, uh, full of leaf cells, which allows us to get the ideal, fantastic result he shows us just uh, half an hour before. Okay, and which one we have to adopt? Which one we have to choose among all these techniques? I just go through uh, them just briefly to show that there is a different ways to, to get the result. As we say, there is a different ways to skin the cat. 
This is rich splitting. Yesterday we listened from Salah that we have not to make vertical cuts. This case was done far be before I just acquainted with the denser drills. That is why I make these vertical cuts. Nowadays, I am not doing vertical cuts at all, at all. We don't need. We have the tools which we call denser drills. We place our implants, then get connective tissue graft from the pellet using poncho technique, suturing, waiting with the result three months later. We take out our healing abutment and now we're ready to soft tissue modification. Look the situation before and what we get after uh, uh, applying this dynamic compression technique. It's easy tool. Just add incrementally a little bit amount of uh, flowable composite on your temporary restoration in transition zone and you will get such type of result, I'm assure you. And this is final restoration. Let's go ahead. Cortical lamina. Situation before, this is CBCT scan. We have disaster here. Uh, there is no bone at all. Look at this picture. We have defect from vestibular to palatal side, so we have to do something with it. So we add the bone, cover it with uh, cortical lamina. This is cured with cortical lamina, uh, produced by an uh, Italian company, which I'm not sure is applicable here. You, you don't have here this uh, material, but nevertheless, look at the result. This is four months later. The other section, CBCT scan shows us the initial amount of bone, which is darker, and the new bone volume, which we create with cortical lamina technique. This is second stage surgery, placing our implant, enhancing soft tissue with connective tissue graft. This is temporary abutments and final result. I want to, you to, to, to look on these two images, before and after, on the CBCT scans before and after. And pay attention, here we have enough amount of bone more than two millimeters, and we have great volume of soft tissue. We recreate the prominence of the root here after such disaster situation. So this, uh, uh, this technique is very viable. I want you to make attention on this technique. Of course, where is Howie Gluckman? Sorry, he's not here. He neglect my lecture, okay? I will re remind him. This technique also works very, very predictable. It's fantastic technique of Dr. Curie. And if you're trying to do it once, you maybe forget all the other steps, all the other techniques, because it works very predictably, and you will get very good results with this technique. Look here. This is before, very thin alveolar ridge. We apply this technique, and this is just four months later. The bone is vital. It's bleeding. It means that... Uh, there is a lot of uh, live cells there, which allows us to get predictable and long-lasting osteointegration of our implants. Of course, there is the other techniques, which we call titanium mesh. The rate of exposure may come to 40% with titanium mesh if you neglect the very important rule. We have to have at least three millimeter of soft tissue covering our um, titanium mesh. Otherwise, it, it will be disaster either in two, three weeks or two, three months later, and you will not get supposed amount of bone you want to create there. In this case, look, it's like the soccer um, field. More than 10 millimeters of new bone, which we can load and place our implants. Another part of the same patient, look, after taking out our titanium mesh, we get eight, nine millimeter. That's what we need to, 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 to place our implants and to be sure that the amount of bone on the vestibular side of the implant is more than two millimeters. The other media, titanium reinforced PTFE membrane, as well as titanium mesh, we have to remember, exposure rate is very high if we have very thin uh, mucosa over it. Either we have to perform like uh, Dr. Glockman shows us uh, uh, this pedicle graft from the pellet to cover like the second layer. In case of some problems, you, you have still there some soft tissue will protect our graft zone. Look how does it work. This is the result after vertical and horizontal augmentation. Beautiful. Of course, sausage technique of Istvan Urban work, works very well, especially for horizontal bone augmentation. 
And you know how we perform our classic GBR procedure. This is what we have at the beginning, grafting with the bone, covering with membrane. This is the result four months later. Enough bone to place our implant very correctly and without any doubts what will be the outcome of our implantation. GBR with tenting screw, the other technique which we can adopt in our everyday practice. Very thin alveolar ridge, and after applying mix of autologous and cortical allografts, we got such type of result. Now we can place our implant easily. Of course, we need maybe some uh, veneer grafting, but nevertheless, we did it. We place our implants, we have enough bone to be stable with our implants. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the ways to increase the amount of uh, soft tissue, the thickness uh, of the soft tissue and the amount of keratinized uh, gingiva around our implants. We know the rules. We have to have at least thickness three millimeters of soft tissue is the ideal situation, three, four, and not less than three millimeter of keratinized tissue uh, gingiva around the implants. In literature, there is a different opinions about keratinized gingiva, but nevertheless, at least me, try to have always the zone of keratinization which will prevent possible complications like peri-implant diseases. Okay, sorry, I want to return. In all my cases, I perform this procedure. Take a piece of gingival graft from the pellet, then deepitalize it and put either with the poncho technique or uh, under the vestibular flap this piece of soft tissue, being sure that I will be able to create then enough amount of soft tissue, in, in, in enough volume of soft tissue, which is very, very critical in implant cases. Of course, you well know how to use roll technique. The same thing, of course, you cannot apply in big def defects uh, this technique uh, because there is not enough soft tissue when we roll uh, our flap under the vestibular part. But nevertheless, you, got good, you, you can get good, good result with that and inverted pedicle palatal flap. This is very important technique which we can adopt in our everyday practice. We make our partial thickness incision and take our connective tissue graft from the pellet which is connected with vestibular flap. Then invert it and create necessary thickness of soft tissue. Look, this is amazing amount of soft tissue. We just increase the thickness of soft tissue there and we sure that the amount of soft tissue will be enough for a long period of time and no any signs for possible um, uh, complications like peri-implant diseases. I want to show before and after. Look how we have such type of defect, concavity here. And this is, we have convex uh, profile around our implants. And of course, free gingival graft. Look, these frenulums is awful. Either we can leave it and got some problems in the future, or you can try to make your free gingival graft. Go to the pellet, take your free gingival graft, suture it after vestibuloplasty, and look how it does work. This is our free gingival graft. You have to be sure that free gingival graft to be very stable, no any movements, otherwise you will lose it, you will get necrosis of your free gingival graft. And this is final result. This is just after a mo month after our free gingival graft procedure. Look, I want you to show that some of, the, some of you may say, this is a very painful procedure for the patient. Sometimes we, we may get some complication like bleeding, not at the day of the surgery, but the day after. Yes, you can, but you have to follow the rules. You have to know where our mm, greater palatinal artery and avoid it. Uh, it depends on the type of the pellet, either it's high pellet or Shallow, you, you have to think how wide you have to make your incision to avoid damaging the, your palatal artery. And this is what we have done with, the, with this case. Cover it with uh, collagen sponge. This is our free gingival graft. This is healing seventh day after our procedure. This is healing 12 days after our procedure. Patient usually take one pill of painkiller, and on the next day, there is no big problem with that. Some doctors suggest to use 
stands to, to protect this zone. Uh, but personally, me don't use this, any of such type of appliances. It works very well. All my, my patients, I especially ask them, can you tell me the range of your pain after my procedure from one to 10, usually two or three, and it's during first two days. Later, everything is okay with that. And look how we apply our free gingival graft. This is the initial situation, vestibular plasty. Applying our free gingival graft using so-called accordion technique, less, uh, just to be able to stretch out up our free gingival graft to be able to cover all the stuff. This is our third day. This is our seventh day. 12th day and 24th day. Look, big difference. We create huge zone of keratinization. I want to show you before and after. Big difference, right? Okay. Later on, we go to create our emergence profile, just adding uh, the global composite on our temporal restoration and being able to provide or mimic the nature to be able to provide so-called uh, papillas in between at the pontic zone. Okay, and I want you to show uh, the strip technique which allows us to avoid taking out big piece of free gingival graft from the palate. Look at this case. We make our vestibular plasty, then go to the palate and take one and a half millimeter uh, width of free gingival graft, suture it at the um, fornix of our vestibulum, three sutures just to cover, just to approximate the edges of our cuts on pellet, and this is 12 day post-op. Please, look at the pellet, look at the donor site. There is just small signs of performed procedure, and you see how well uh, we got the new zone of keratinization. Just two weeks later, we have to have the, uh, the surface which will not distinguish from the original color and the type, the biotype of the soft tissues we have there. And this is one month post-op. I think that it's very, very predictable technique which we, you can adapt in your everyday practice without any problems, without any fear of uh, bleeding from the donor site. This is before, this is after. We got more than a centimeter of keratinization there, just applying one and a half millimeter strip of free gingival graft. Okay, the other case with strip technique. This is long story of a referral patient uh, which come with improperly placed implant. It's, it was placed vestibularly, more than it has to be. As we listened yesterday, Dr. Pinto said, if it's not patient, my patient, I said, let's extract the implant. If it's mine, this, this was the patient of my uh, close friends. He asked me not to extract the implant. And I said, okay, I will try to do the best I can. So we make the procedures after procedures. There was three surgeries. We add some uh, bone particulate. We add connective tissue graft. Then after healing, we go to increase the width of keratinization. This is our vestibular plasty. And again, we get some strip of free gingival graft from the pellet and suture it. Look, after 10 days, it's the 12 days after the surgery, we got totally restored surface of the um, um, soft tissues there, and look on the very important thing. In all cases, when we go to pellet and take our free gingival graft, we got the difference in color, because the structure and biotype is totally different. With this type of technique, we have the same color, at least it's not noticeable the difference between the colors of graft and new zone of keratinization. Okay, this is the new zone of keratinization which we got just after 12 days of, uh, with, with our surgery. I want to show the progress. This is, by the way, the first photo is, uh, photography is the uh, situation just at the day when patient came to my office. With all this procedure, we got the new level of attachment of course, we don't know, should be stable or not. Nobody can tell me that it will long lasting result, but at least we try to do the best we can. Okay, let's go through some cases. Socket shield technique. Where is Chuck? He's also, oh, 
Hi, Chuck. Thank you. This is Chuck who insists that I have to try this technique two years ago on the previous Congress here. I say, are you crazy? This is crap. <laughs> you remember, Chuck? And that he said, OK, we will see it. Then I go to, to my homeland and try to think what he's trying to insist about uh, Socket Shield. Then go through literature, read, look at different cases on Facebook, on uh, dental experience. They, I said, one day I have to try this. OK, let's look at this situation before. The lower first and second premolars. Tooth has to be extracted, and the zone of first premolar is the big deficiency of bone and soft tissue. And I want to notice the first molar is the implant previously placed by me. So we have to protect somehow this interdental bone. OK, I make a C shape. You see the C shape socket shield. Then, with the help of these magic drills, I make my osteotomy. You can see it. Place our implant, fill the gap. You will see. I just, for making photography, I just raise a little bit flap to be sure that it's on the level of the marginal bone. Place our second implant, put our healing abutments, cover it with PRF membranes combined with uh, healing abutments, suture it, and awaiting what will be happen. Okay, look, this is the healing. Three months later, I take out my healing abutments, everything is. Mwah. Thank you, Chuck. I love it so much. Then I apply my magic. I make my uh, procedure, which we called, you know, uh, modifying our soft tissue to get the new emergence profile. And I love the result, really. Look, will be able anybody to get the same result if he extract the tooth totally? No. If you can show me the result, such type result. Even two months after extraction, we got resorption. Four months later, we all know it's not my opinion, it's Araujo from Brazil. He is genius. He shows how in eight weeks we lose about 30-40% of vestibular bone. With this technique, it works very, very well, predictable. And adding to this technique, osteodensification, we can get high initial stability, high re uh, insertion torque, and even if you are not you know, crazy like me, you can put your temporary restoration on even one abutment, one time, and final restoration. Okay, let's go. And I want you to show, this is the part of C-shape socket shield, and this is the implant which we have there. And we preserve this peak, this bone. Otherwise, be sure that you will lose bone and soft tissue, for sure, for 100%. Okay, and this is our final restoration. I want to show before and after. I love this result. This is fabulous. And not because of me, it's because of the technique. So the other case, tooth extraction, socket preservation, delayed implant placement, connective tissue grafting, emergence profile uh, engineering, and hybrid crown. We'll go through the case uh, very fast. This is tooth extraction of upper first and second molar. Premolar is the pontic. So we make our um, preparation of the tooth, take out our, the, the roots. At that time, when I performed this procedure, there was no tool in my hand. And by the way, I want to notice that I got this technique and this tool with the help of Isaac Tavil. Thank you him very much to introduce this technique. And of course, Salah, after telling uh, Isaac tells Salah, he needs this tool. I got this tool, and since that, many, many things in my life changed. Uh, I want to be a little bit ahead of Dr. Schwimmer, who told about two types of life, life before and after Salah. Or you, Fred, said it. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is really different types of life, before and after Salah. And I'm happy, happy, really happy, that my life has changed in that way due to this great person, this great human being. OK, we just filled with the graft material, covered it with PRF, suture. This is our CBCT scan just after our procedure. And this is healing, two weeks and four months post-op. Then we are going to place our implants. 
With the help of these drills, I already got these drills. I perform my procedure, and by the way, we, we do a little bit crystal approach sinus lift. We cover it with PRF liquid or what, gel, and I called it God water. We don't know does it work inside of the socket or not. At least we put it. And high initial stability, 45 Newton per centimeter. All three impl implants are there. We measure our ISQ. I want you to look at these numbers. 77, 59, 60. Four months after grafting the socket with the sinus lift. And we will look how it dramatically changed very, very fast. In another three months, we get unbelievable increase of all this data. And I want you to show this. This is the uh, crystal approach sinus lift using these drills. And look, there is no any type of cortical bone here. And I want you to notice that four months later, we have new cortical wall of the sinus. It's amazing. Why? Because we use allograft with special characteristic, which allows us to get the new wall of the sinus. OK, so CBCT scan just after the implant placement. Three uh, section, sections of all these three implants. We go through that, through that very fast. Healing abutment, connective tissue graft in the zone of the first premolar, of the second premolar. We got it from the tuberosity. This is our connective tissue graft. We use so-called, um, what we called it, uh, Snejana, this technique. <laughs> this is Snejana technique. OK. We increase the width and the, the volume of uh, connective tissue graft there. Put it under vestibular flap, suturing, waiting some period of time. Now we are going to the second stage, and we measure it, 81. Initially, 77. 77 was initially 59. And third one, 72, initially 60. Just three months later after implant placement. Now we are going to deliver our temporary crowns. We are ready for it. We put our temporary crowns and make some modification to get this result. I love it so much. And beside it, I love the new cortical plate which we got with this technique. We densify our allograft inside of the sinus. And look, this is the final result. And this is new sinus wall. Compare. No any sign of wall there and new cortical plate here. It's amazing for me. OK, now. Same patient, one year later. Patient came to me with the other part. We have disaster there, and I want you to be very, very, you know, don't hurry me. I want to show you each uh, tooth which I take out and utilizing socket shield and all the other technique, which spot technique, Charles, which we are uh, using in this case. So we began with the first premolar, socket shield at the zone of first prem premolar. Implant placement, here it is, densifying our uh, socket. Place our implant, fill the gap with the allograft, then go to the other tooth. The same procedure, we're measuring to be sure that everything will be taken out from the canal. We know that we have to take out the apex of the root to be sure that we will escape any type of inf infection there. The same procedure here. This is our socket, uh, palatal part. This is our socket shield. Look, where it is. I don't see from here. Here it is. And we have to remember, we have to keep it on the level of the uh, crystal bone. Fill the gap with the bone. Put our implant. Go to the other one. This one has to be taken, but not fully. We preserve the socket taking out our palatal root, part of the root, and keep uh, the vestibular zone. It's, we called it glocker technique. Fill it with the bone to be sure that uh, the profile of the socket and the architecture of the bone will stay stable for a long period of time. Now we are going to first, first molar. The same technique, the same thing, taking out the palatal part of the root, making our osteotomy with the, the denser drills placing our implants. All the implants were placed with high initial stability and with high ISQ. That is why we will be able to uh, restore the case with temporary restoration. 
Then go to the other side, make our procedure the same way, the same technique, everywhere, fill the gap, put our implant. This is our X-ray post-op, put our healing abutment just to protect until we go to temporary restoration. Go to the uh, canine, make the same procedure, and place our implant. Fill the gap with the allograft, make our X-ray, here it is. We're done. All six implants, five implants were placed, and the other one, I have to, to be placed on the zone of the second um, premolar, but we have to do uh, uh, sinus lift with uh, simultaneous, and we have the problems with the sinus because they're in the uh, uh, sinus, so we decide not to do it and place our implant at the zone of the first premolar. We take out, as well, the part of the root, fill the, uh, the void with the allograft, and place our implant at the zone of first premolar, the zone where we don't have anything, just regular width of the uh, reach after extraction of the tooth. Of course, there is some deficiency of soft and hard tissue there. Okay, that's the result. I want you to show before and after. This is done in two hours, very easy, with the use of kit which we got from Megagen. Okay, so we have already our temporary restoration. We just uh, take our uh, impression, send it to laboratory, adjust it, and returns to patient. I want you to look at the socket shields everywhere. Here it is. Everywhere we have the socket shield, which protect our bone from resorption. Our vestibular wall will be very safe with this technique. And this is delivery of our temporary restoration at the day of surgery. I want you to show how it heals. Third days, fifth days, and 13th days after the surgery. And we make, of course, our control CBCT scan. This is the implants, each after one. Everywhere we have the socket shield, and everywhere we preserve our vestibular wall. Okay, this is the other side. And six months post-op, patient returned to final restoration. We make our control X-rays. Of course, we have our control CBCT scan six months later. Everything is there, nothing changed. So we are ready for final restoration. I want you to show the CBCT scan six months later. This is the, the tooth after tooth, the implants after implant. Everything is there, nothing loose. And we also place an implant at the zone of the second molar. This is the final restoration. It takes nine months from A to Z, and patient was very happy with the result, and truly said, I'm also happy because we preserve everything there. We don't lose the height. We don't lose the architecture of the bone. And I want you to show the X-ray of delivery of our uh, final restoration. Everything is there, very clear. You can see everywhere, preserve it bone with the socket shields. You can see here, here, everywhere. All the way, we have the socket shield, which preserve our bone from the uh, collapse. And of course, we preserve interdental bone peaks, which is very important. I want to show the smile of the patient at the moment we deliver our restoration. She was happy. She cries, really, with the happiness which we got. And that's why we are working every day in our practices to be able to create such type of restoration and to give the patients such type of happiness. Okay. The other case. This is the case of immediate implant placement at lower implant uh, first molar. This is how oh, I want to return. You have to take attention. We, as Salah talked about that a lot of time, that we have to have trabecular bone in between the uh, roots. Otherwise, this technique of immediate implant placement into the septum doesn't work. You will fail. Or you will destroy everything there and put the implant just getting initial stability uh, due to two millimeters of the bone beneath the socket. Okay, just go through it. This is our initial situation. We take out the root very carefully. It was ankylosed. You see how many pieces of roots I take out from the uh, socket. And of course, we have to use piezo surgery to be sure that we can establish the track, the way we are going to make our uh, osteotomy. It's very important. Otherwise, it's very difficult to go through very thin septum and to be safe and stable with the drills. Even with these peak drills, which is very, very sharp and precise, it's very difficult to do the procedure. That is why we have to have this 
piezo surgery device in our armamentarium. Okay, we check out our 3D position. We have to be sure that we keep all the rules. I don't want to mention it, you already know. And this is the most fabulous result which we got. I want you to be very careful with that and very attentive. Boom, boom, boom. Wider, 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 and we still have the bone around it. So what we did, from 1.8 or 1.5 millimeter, we go to 4.0 millimeter and still keep the bone around our uh, septum. And we are ready to place implant inside the bone, not in the air. Just look at this. This is amazing. Thank you very much to Salah. He just gave us this opportunity to perform such type of procedure. I love it so much. Really, thank you so much. And then I want to show initial situation and final result. This is amazing. And all due not only to our hands and the tool which gave Salah to us. As he told many times, it's because of the nature. It's because of the collagen which we have in trabecular bone. We just use the, the, the characteristic of the bone. We just use plasticity of the bone to enlarge it and to keep the walls there. Okay, this is initial and final result. Is this a miracle? This is a rhetoric question. It's a miracle for me. But it's all about bone plasticity and elasticity. We have to utilize all these characteristics of the bone to get such type of result. Okay, I want just to show several such type of cases, the same result, the same predictable uh, outcome in each cases. The only thing we have to take into account that your septum has to be a little bit trabecular. Otherwise, it will not work with your hands, not in, even in my hands. And I have a couple of dozen of these cases. We collect all the data and I'm waiting from my colleagues. Just not be lazy, put it together. We are ready to go with the uh, beautiful articles about this technique, which allows us to keep the bone there. And uh, with my cases, I have one case uh, about uh, three years, the other case one and a half, two years, two and a half years. So just ask me, yeah, thank you, thank you, but you are a little bit earlier than me be acquainted with this beautiful person. So I ask you, really, let's put together. It will be a very interesting article. So look, look here, the same thing. I want to return. Nothing at the beginning, just one and a half millimeter. And we are able to create the osteotomy 3.84 millimeter. In each of our cases, there is a dozen of these cases which are reproducible and we can do it. You see the, the, the protocol, here it is. This is, the pro this is the before and after, the same thing everywhere. This, this is the protocol, and it works very well. You have it in your material which, we, which uh, we gave to you. And then after the osteotomy, we grafted it with the uh, bone chips. We put it in sticky format. Of course, we have to overgraft, like Dr. Darosa sh uh, shows us. We always have to put a little bit more above the platform of the implant to be sure that we will not have any voids, any uh, empty space there. Otherwise, it will not work. Now we are placing our healing abutment. We, of course, look, 75, it's initial ISQ. It's amazing. We put the implant nowhere in the air, practically. This is healing abutment with poncho technique. This is healing, of course, we change this wide abutment. Why use wide abutment? To protect our bone from slippage from the socket. Then we change to a narrow abutment to, to allow soft tissue to ingrow there. And our temporary crown, look, this is our modification of temporary crowns. And this is the final result of the soft tissue. Just two modifications, and you are able to reproduce it. Just add small amount of increments of, uh, of flowable composite there. And during two weeks, you will get such type of result. Now we are ready to deliver our final restoration. We, of course, customize transfer to be sure that we send to laboratory very precise data. This is the, uh, our impression with uh, customized transfer. And final data, you remember? We uh, begin from 77, and two months later, 83, 86. This, uh, we always check in two dimensions, mesiodistally and vestibular buccally. Uh, vestibular lingually, sorry. 
This is for, uh, final crown delivery. It's beautiful. So I want to show that sometimes we got complication with our procedures. Not always we are on the top of the hill. Sometimes we need to stop and reassure our abilities and our properties. So this is the initial situation. We have a lot of bone, trabecular bone in between of these roots. This is the first molar case. We make our extraction, make our osteotomy, place our implant, perform all the procedure described before. We raise our vestibular flap, and I think that the disaster comes from here. We put our uh, collagen membrane, cover it all together with the PRF membrane, suturing, and very proud of this uh, situation, send the patient home. One month later, patient come with such type of disaster. It's really a disaster. I don't know what to do at the moment. Uh, she opened her mouth and said, doctor, I have a little bit bruising here. I don't know what, uh, there is something there. This is not something, it's anything. It's all, everything. I don't know. Of course, we need to be able to take care about this situation. I was so shocked that it was the only photo which I make after the surgery, during the surgery. I need to handle the situation. So what we basically do, we raise the flap, we clean everything from there, use chemical treatment. I use tetracycline slur, yeah, put three minutes. We don't know does it work or not. Some uh, literature said that you can put the water there and the same result will, will be here. Then we put our bone particles in sticky format, cover it with collagen or with connective tissue graft, raise our flap and suture, and go to pray. Lot of praise at this evening. <laughs> this is the only thing which will help you. Okay, look. What we got at the end of the day. Thanks God. Our prayer is working. So, after it, we forgot, uh, forget that we have some complication, and we try to make the best we can with the soft tissues. We try to play with them. And this is what we got after our modification. So if I don't show you the complication and begin with good part and ending with this result, you'll say, oh, it's a very interesting case. But I want you to know that some complication will occur. And you have to be ready for that. This is before, this is after our modification. Of course, the same technique of transferring, and final crown delivery. Look at the beauty of the soft tissue around. Why? Because we apply our soft tissue graft at the stage of caring, taking care about this complication. We do a lot of things in one moment. Maybe it is dangerous, as we know, one magic one time, but I try to put bone and cover it with connective tissue graft, and that's the result. We are able to push soft tissue to get such type of emergence profile. Okay. Soft tissue is very beautiful. We are happy, patient happy. The other case, upper. One more time, complication, guys. I want to show you what may happen with you when, when we are not Ziv Maser. Okay. This is extraction. All the tips of the roots are inside of the sinus. Everywhere, perforation. Disaster. What we have to do? We decide to go further. Open lateral window to raise the uh, membrane, to cover it somehow, and to handle the situation. Patient, by the way, is smoker. I know some doctors don't get the patient who are smokers. Because usually, this is paper thin sinus uh, membrane and prone to uh, such type of perforation. So we enlarge our uh, access to be able to handle this. Of course, there is a technique, which we call parachute technique. We insert collagen membrane to the mesial part of the sinus, put uh, the membrane in such a way to be able to put our bone and be able to prevent the slippage of the bone inside of whole sinus. But it's very complicated technique. At least I try to do it. Look, the result. Oh. <clears throat> Look, this is very weird. Ba -ba -ba -bam. I make my <laughs> I make my osteotomy, and this looks like very you know funny. Enlarge it. Now elevate our membrane, put the bone there. 
Da 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 da. <laughs> okay, we cover our sinus success, lateral success with the collagen membrane after putting the bone there. Of course, this time we have to pray much more than previous case. And this is our X-ray just after placing our implant. We got initial stability. ISQ was low, of course, not so high as we suppose because we have only two, two and a half millimeter of bone, natural bone there. So we put our healing abutment, white healing abutment with PRF membrane, suturing, and hope that everything will, will be in such way. This is the CBCT scan, which we got six months later. And you see new volume of the uh, um, bone over the top of the implant. It totally covered all the sides of the implants. And we noticed that the quality of the uh, soft tissue around, so I mean uh, sinus membrane, is very well designed. Of course, you see uh, these this voids. It means that this part of growth a little bit go inside of the sinus, but nevertheless, it works very well. So we are ready to finish the case. And again, our praise works very well. This is what we get with our white healing abutment. <sighs> Measuring ISQ, high ISQ level, we are ready to deliver our final uh, implant. By the way, in this case, I asked patient, do you want to make some plays with soft tissue? He said, no, doctor. Let me go put my final restoration. It's enough for me. Okay, enough, enough. We, we put our final restoration there and let patient to go. The other case, this is the case of placing two implants in the upper maxilla, uh, posterior maxilla, I mean. This is first and second premolar. We do the standard procedure, and I just want to show how well works the protocols which we apply every day in our practice. Zone of the first molar. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have nova bone to show this beautiful dome. But listen to me. I am able to perform the same procedure with particulate bone graft. And I want you to show it. Just make your sticky bone, cut it in small pieces, and put it inside counterclockwise 150 RPM without water irrigation. Be very careful. Be very patient. Not patient like patient, but patient, calm patient, I mean. Okay? I want to return and want to show you, you see the intact membrane. We have only three millimeters of bone there and apply the standard protocol which you have everybody in your papers. Just follow the protocol and you will be happy with the result. Okay, we put our bone. Look, it seems like something like Nova bone, not so much uh, round like Nova bone case, but nevertheless, it's good. Okay, this is better, right? Yes, we put our implant. If you have straightforward piece of your bone inside the sinus, no, you perforate it. If you have dome shaped, everything works well. Okay, high initial stability. We're checking our parallelism with these uh, devices, measuring ISQ, high ISQ. Then we perform our veneer grafting for sure, because we have less than one millimeter of bone on vestibular side of first premolar. Put our collagen membrane inside, put our bone there. I don't know that we have to call it, so, uh, what's the name, Dr. Pinto? Uh, solid L LPRF block. Soft block and hard block. This is hard block. And we make our suturing. Of course, we use our healing abutment like some tents to increase the volume of soft tissue. And this is our result with CBCT scan. You see, you see that everything is properly designed. We have no perforation there. This is 3D scan showing that everything done properly. Then we measure it it's high enough to be able to load it. This is our final restoration with new emergence profile created there. Okay, go to the other case. The upper first molar, we have to extract it. We do it very carefully. Next time, I hope be able to meet you next time here, I will show you the case with a molar shield. Until now, I have no such, you know, uh, 
proficiency with that. But I will chuck my word. We extract the traumatically all three roots, make our osteotomy, place our implant, check the direction, then go to the zone of the molar, uh, premolar, place our implant there as well, put a little bit bone, and suture it. This is what we call socket seal abutment. Very useful you know, tool to, to cover your uh, upper molar zone to prevent any slippage of the bone which we put inside of the socket. And look, this is healing. Two months later, we put uh, healing abutment in the zone of the first premolar and look at this beautiful emergence profile. We just do what? Socket seal abutment at the moment of implant placement, nothing more. You don't need to do anything more with this uh, emergence at the zone of the first molar. Then we go to create emergence at the zone of the pontic and to try to mimic the interdental papilla there. Look, this is what we do with temporary bridge to be able to create new papilla in between of these tooth, teeth. And this is emergence profile development, day zero, day 15, and day 24. You see, we create new papilla. Here it is. And I love such type of, you know, modification. Of course, if patients agree to do it with you. And our final restoration, and you can see here the final result two years later. Nothing changed, everything is there. Okay, let's go ahead. Case of immediate loaded full lower arch. We will go, oh, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the case of lateral incisor. Okay, lateral incisor view before the extraction. We do our extraction very carefully. We keep our socket shield there. We, feel, uh, we extract, of course, palatal part of this root, then we make this amazing per procedure. Look, we create new wall with the help of the drills. And this is amazing. We just move this wall from palatal side to vestibular side. Now we are able to put our implant totally covered with the bone around. And we put the bone everywhere to fill the gap, high initial torque, high initial ISQ level, and of course, I perform some um, connected tissue graft, which we take from the, uh, from the tuberosity, put it in between the, um, uh, we make a pouch and put under vestibular flap to increase the width. This is the design of our temporal restoration. It has to be, you know, it has to be designed in the way to, to protect and to help uh, to prevent the collapse of soft tissue inside. And of course, we make overgrafting. Go ahead. This is the healing three weeks and one month post-op. And this is what we have after one and a half months, uh, months. ISQ level is not so high, so we just measure it to be sure that everything goes well. This is three months later, total healing. We, we keep the volume and contour of our soft tissue and the prominence of the root because of the technique of socket shield, and it works very, very well. ISQ high, 76, we are going to go further. We order our final crown and we deliver the final crown in three months, just after extraction and our implant placement with high ISQ level, which means that everything will be predictable. I want you to show before and after. Look at this line. Sorry. Look. Here it is, before and after. Nothing changed even a little bit more soft tissue around our implant. Okay, the other case with delayed implant, we extract the tooth, put the bone inside, cover it with PRF membranes, suturing, then four months later we return, or oh, three months later we return and put our implant utilizing denser drills. Look how beautiful uh, ridge regenerated after placing the bone inside. Of course, we cannot prevent with this technique some um, bone resorption from vestibular side, but it's okay for the lower mandible uh, case. Uh, at the zone of first and second premolar, we all, all, uh, always had enough uh, bone to place our implant safely. So we make our osteotomy, place our implants, suturing. This is X-rays after placement, our healing abutment. I, why I show this case to you? I want you to notice that 
This is the emergence profile just after taking out our healing abutment. Can we perform something else with that? Yes, we can. I want you to look at this. This is our um, temporary crown modification. This is the result we got. Two weeks. Every two weeks, we add incrementally a little bit new uh, flowable composite, and we're able to recreate the natural the, uh, appearance of the uh, emergence profile, mimicking the nature, mimicking the natural appearance of the tooth and the gingiva around it, scallop gingiva around it. And uh, as well, in the other cases, I showed the same thing, that we are able to recreate interdental, inter-implant papilla, which is not a very easy procedure. Why? Because we have enough soft tissue there, we can push it and recreate the new emergence profile. And this is final restoration. Okay. The other case with socket shield, uh, which I do just recently, it's not complete, but I want to show you the same technique which we apply in previous cases. We, we extract the palatal part of the premolar, then we make our sinus lift with, with the help of the denser drills. We fill the gaps between uh, the vestibular wall and all the socket walls, measure our ISQ, and I want you to show using socket seal abutment allows us to get such result in just how many? Nine days. It's totally healed. And I hope that nothing will be changed, especially at the zone of, first, uh, of the second premolar where we keep our socket shield there. And I want you to notice how easily we perform our, uh, 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 our um, sinus lift with the help of denser drills. Okay. And of course, we want to talk a little bit about ridge expansion using the protocol which mentioned here in our papers. Very thin initial situation with the mandible at the zone of the second uh, premolar, first and second molar. We just raise our flaps, we make our osteotomy, look how plastic is born, but we not put the implant there. Why? Because it mainly consists of cortical bones. Otherwise, we will lose the bone. Today, Dr. Salama shows what happens when we neglect this rule. So what we are doing here, just grafting and returning three months later. Why three months? Why not five months? Because we need soft tissue, uh, soft uh, bone layer, which we are able to push. And look how easily we do it. This is uh, grafting, suturing, of course, you know, three layers of suture, deep horizontal mattress, marginal mattress, and finally, uh, marginal X sutures. And just three months later, we place our implants. Easy. We have enough width of the bone. The, the uh, stiffness of the bone is not so high that may, may cause some resorption in later period of time. So we place our implant three months later. Here it is. We got connective tissue from the pellet using uh, the sponge technique. Place our healing abutment with, with it and waiting some period of time. Cases are not ended, with, ended up with, uh, with the patient, but you see the basic. We can manage the very thin ridge with full of cortical bone with the use of the protocol which described for ridge expansion without placing our implant. And the other case, the same way. We um, take out our um, roots, put our bone graft there, increase the width, cover it with collagen membrane, suturing, waiting three months. Returning three months later, very clearly shown that the bone is not matured yet, but it allows us to move it. Look, we make our piezo surgery, then we go with denser drills. I want you to notice how we push the bone on vestibular side. Here it is. You can see it. It's obvious. It's elastic, and we can work with that. This is initial ISQ. High enough, right? High initial torque. That's it. Nothing more. Just place a veneer grafting there, and you are done with the case. Of course, we apply another layer of collagen membrane to be sure that everything will stay there for a long period of time. And second stage surgery. Our implants, where it is? It's under the bone. OK, we open, take out the, uh, the cover screw, place our healing abutment. I want just, OK, I know that I am finishing. 
look, enough amount of bone here and here. I don't want to raise the flap more. Otherwise, we will have another two millimeters there. And temporary healing abutment using cervical VPI. Yes, with suturing. Look, this is some period of time. We just take out our cervical abutment, and this is our emergence profile. Either we can stop here, or just try to modify uh, the pontic side with the um, temporary restoration. So, I want you to give you take-home message. Once again, create solid bone base. Create enough soft tissue, volume and width and the quality of keratinized tissue. Make some modification. Reach this beautiful outcome, these beautiful emergence profiles. Support with properly designed restoration. And, Chuck, where are you? We have to go to Italy. In Bologna, there is a place where we can rent this Ferrari 488 and have two hours ride around. It's amazing. And this is Salvador Dali who said, have no fear of perfection. You will never reach it. Thank you very much. From Moscow, with love. Thank you.